Hello and welcome back to lesson six of commercial radio. So in the previous lesson, we finished up looking at the three pillars of radio. We looked at programming in detail and then we looked at um, sales and marketing in detail, okay? With the idea in lesson five that you should be able to identify what a sales department does and what the role of each member is within the department. Um, and then the same with the marketing team. You should be able to identify what each member does in the marketing team and what they are responsible for overall. Um, which brings us to where we are today, which is the structure of the radio station. So today we're going to start breaking it down completely um, with the idea that by the end of this, you should be able to understand what every single uh, person's roles and responsibilities would be within a radio station, okay? So that there's, there's, so that everything is clear cut for you. All right, this is part six of six. So this will be the last lesson in, so this will be the last lesson in commercial radio landscape and commercial station management. And if you want to go to your textbook, we'll be looking at page 62 to 70 today, okay? So the structure of the station, the duties, roles, and responsibilities. The size of a radio station depends consider considerably on its business model and the size of the market it serves. It is possible to run a small community radio station serving 10,000 people with a group of four permanent staff members. However, if the radio station is However, if the radio station is a large commercial radio station that covers a large territory with many different groups of people in different time zones, um, all of whom have different interests and behaviors, then you'll need a larger team, obviously. Newcomers to radio often think that the staff complement consists of people on the other side of the microphone. However, in addition to the core management team, there are a number of other uh, team members who work at a radio station. If we, put, if we put all of the roles that we've discussed together, the structure for a radio station may look something like this organogram that you can currently see. Right at the top, it starts with station manager, and then obviously you have an administrator um, who assists the station manager. Then you have the three main management members, okay? Program manager, the marketing manager, the sales manager, which is the three that we have been speaking about um, with regards to the three pillars of radio. So under the program manager, you will have a, a music compiler, an on-air promotions coordinator, scheduling assistants, studio engineers, audio producers, specialist producers, and the show teams, which consist of the presenters and the three different types of producers who are content producers, administrative producers, and audio producers. Then under the marketing manager, you have event coordinators, the PR specialists, and digital marketing specialists. And then we have the sales manager. And people who report to the sales manager is the business, the sales business unit and the regional managers, account executives, and booking administrator administrators and schedulers. All of these are very important roles and all of these are very and all of these are needed within a commercial radio station. Like any business, a radio station requires business services such as financial managers, accountants and lawyers. Uh, these can be employed as functions these can be employed as functions for the radio station but are typically shared across several radio stations that are owned by one conglomerate or larger organization. So for instance, um, Kakiso Media, Prime Media, or African Media Entertainment. So they, they might all share um, people like accountants and lawyers and financial managers. <clears throat> so these roles, of, these roles won't be in the organogram. Um, as they are dependent on the size and the need of a particular station, as they are dependent on the size of the need that a particular station has for these services. Um, however, each of these business services do support the station manager in making decisions that will enable the station to reach its business objectives 
and deliver value to audiences, clients, uh, shareholders, and stakeholders. In addition to the official structure, and um, specifically in the case of community radio stations, they are volunteers. So for instance, people, so in other words, people who um, work without payment. These volunteers may be paid a stipend of sorts uh, to cover their expenses such as transport, but they will mostly work for free. Um, these people are vital resources for a community station, as they are generally citizens of that particular community and are plugged into the issues and celebrations that are important to the listeners in that specific area. Volunteers' networks um, and the ability to speak as part of the community are vital to the enthusiasm are vital to the enthusiasm of the station. In exchange for their help at these community radio stations, volunteers um, can learn valuable skills that can, that can set them on their radio career paths. This is essential. This is the essential non-cash benefit of being a volunteer in a highly competitive industry. In this way, a community radio station operates as both a business and as a training or a learning academy. If you think about something like campus radio stations, this is 100% the case. Some cam campus radio stations might pay um, their full-time, might pay their weekly presenters or might pay the daytime presenters, but the rest of them would be volunteers. And they also have, um, they also have things like a, like a marketing team and a program um, and music compilers and sales teams, etc. So they really teach you all of these skills. And there are many examples of presenters who started off on a campus radio station who are currently today at community uh, um, currently today at commercial radio stations because of that base training that they received um, in their initial campus radio station phase where they weren't paid. So it's a really good place to start out. Um, if you want to start out seeing as commercial radio stations are so competitive by nature. In terms of staff, this means that they are, that they're, in terms of staff, this means that there can be any number of volunteers fulfilling certain positions that would be permanent positions at other commercial or publicly owned radio stations. Additionally, uh, volunteers may work simply to help out and learn on the job. In this way, they may duplicate roles that are already paid in the structure and offer an extra pair of hands um, and a voice to what is needed by that community radio station. So what we're going to do now is we'll look at each individual role um, and their responsibilities as each person in each pillar of a radio station is responsible for various actions and tasks. We look at a brief breakdown and I say brief because this is the tip of what, for instance, a station manager at a radio station will do. But um, the responsibility there is of a station manager there is to provide strategic direction, guidance and management to the station in a cost effective manner in compliance with its license conditions, once again, of the station. The station manager's responsibilities also include to maximize audience and revenue opportunities, okay? The station manager at a commercial radio station will need to maximize the revenue opportunities for their shareholders or their stakeholders. If we look at a program manager briefly, their responsibilities include develop and implement the programming strategy of the radio station, manage the programming team as well as the on-air and production talent to build audiences and support sales and marketing strategies. A marketing manager then, their responsibilities are to develop and implement the marketing strategy of the radio station, to manage the marketing team and agency marketing services and suppliers, to attract new audiences and to support sales and programming strategies. Sales manager, 
The responsibilities are to develop and implement the sales strategy of the radio station, to manage the sales team and to achieve revenue target across relevant revenue streams. Okay, so this is a summary of the most important management members of a radio station. Or the, a summary of the management team of a radio station. If we look at the rest of them now. Start. Okay, so right at the top, scheduling assistant. A scheduling assistant effective, effectively handles the administration of the programming department. Um, a scheduling assistant will assist by scheduling, will schedule, integrate, and check advertising spot logs to ensure the rules for the playout of these spots are adhered to. That's something that you will learn about a little bit later, okay? Because on the playout system, we have certain rules that we need to check um, that are being enforced. Next, we have the on-air promotions coordinator, um, and their roles and responsibilities are to develop and deliver promotional campaigns for optimal awareness and engagement among listeners that are in line with the station's sales and programming strategies. Then we have the music compiler, who will select and schedule music and music programs that attract and sustain audiences in line with the station's license conditions and strategy. You'll hear we keep saying the same thing, that everything that they do must be within the station's licensing conditions and strategy. Obviously the strategy that the station manager comes up with, but the license, of, the license conditions are those class licenses um, that we receive from ICASA, okay? the Independent Communications Authority of South Africa. Then we have a studio engineer. Studio engineers ensure that technical capacity is maintained and evolved so that the radio station may broadcast effectively and with high standard of quality to its licensed broadcast footprint and audience. Audio producers next there. Audio producers create and deliver the on-air sound of the station across all shows and for all station-specific campaigns, marketing and programming activities. Our next role is the newsroom and their duties and responsibilities are to collate, generate and ensure the accuracy of all newsworthy information generated for the radio station. They also secure audio elements to enhance the delivery of news on the station. So they will get news bites or box pops or whatever, um, or something similar that they will then play on air during their news clips, during their news bulletins. Then the role of a specialist producer, they collate, generate, and ensure the accuracy of all specialist programming relevant to the station's programming strategy. An event coordinator will implement the marketing strategy by managing, monitoring, and measuring events in terms of their contribution to the station's strategy. A PR specialist will implement the marketing strategy by securing media coverage for the station's talent and programming and monitor and measure the PR results in terms of their contribution to the station's strategy. And the second last one there, but this is one that's becoming the second last one there, digital marketing specialist. They will implement the digital strategy by designing, building and maintaining digital platforms for the station as well as by enhancing the station's programming strategy through the development of digital communities and digital marketing tools. And then lastly, the role of administrators. They manage various business services and administrative functions that enable the smooth running of the station. Okay, so this is pretty much everyone that you need in a commercial radio station for the station to run smoothly on a day-to-day -day basis. When applying for a role within a radio station, it is vital that you demonstrate prior experience. This is because working within the media landscape is more about having a portfolio of evidence 
demonstrating the time you have put into understanding and practicing the role rather than checking off a list of tasks that you are able to perform. Working in radio places more focus on how long you've been practicing a skill as practice makes perfect. This is especially true for on-air roles. For example, uh, consider the responsibility of an airplane pilot. The more time a pilot has been flying, so for instance, the more hours that they've logged um, in the air, the more reliable they are to manage the airplane when things go wrong, and the more likely the passengers are to arrive safe and on time at their destination. In the same way, the more time a producer or a presenter has spent on air delivering content, uh, managing competitions or promotions, reading libraries, delivering the news and the traffic, and driving the studio desk and systems, the more reliable they will be to manage the show with finesse. As a result, the show is more likely to be appealing to the listeners, as well as to attract and retain these listeners, thereby delivering a profitable show to the station. Next, we look at the budgeting and the finance of a radio station. Very important, obviously. As a business, the financial success of a radio station is dependent on balancing the books. In other words, the station must generate enough revenue or bring in sufficient money to cover its expenses and its operations. If it's a commercial radio station and is designed to deliver a profit to shareholders, then it needs to bring in more revenue based on the financial projections and the promises that the radio station's management team um, has made to the board of directors when presenting the strategy at the beginning of the new financial year. There are several ways in which a station can generate revenue. And we're going to look at these now. Okay, so it's broken down into community, private business, local government, national government, and donors. So what this left side uh, reflects is the different types of So the different places where you can get your revenue from. So you can get your revenue from, a from the community, from private businesses. Um, the government can give you revenue. So your local or your national government can give you revenue. And then lastly, donors can obviously give you money. If we look at the community, the first one there, so what can they give you? Value in kind, they can volunteer their time and their skills, okay, and their skill sets. Um, you can get grants or donations from the community, from individuals, from local businesses or donors that can make donations and pledges. From a programming and content perspective, um, the community can offer expertise to enrich on air content, such as interviews or podcasts and specially hosted programs. From an advertising or client source revenue point of view, the community can pay for airtime and hire presenters for appearances, which the, which the station will take a small percentage of as a booking fee. And then lastly, alternative revenue, um, the, communi the community can purchase tickets to events, buy merchandise that is sold by the station or establish other uh, alternative small business ventures. So for example, a coffee shop or a studio recording facility. Next, we have private businesses. So the value in kind are the private businesses. They can provide premises that the radio station can use or or subsidize overhead costs such as electricity or internet connectivity. Private businesses can provide support as part of its corporate social investment, so its CSI programs. And then from an advertising or client source revenue perspective, private businesses can pay for airtime and hire presenters for appearances or hire out facilities owned by the station. Then next, the local government in terms of valuing kind, they can provide premises to the radio station that the radio station can use or subsidize over it can use or subsidize. Um, they can provide premises that the radio station can use or subsidize overhead costs such as electricity or internet connectivity. From a grants or donations point of view, the local government can 
make certain contributions, particularly in public radio, um, for specific topics and information to be covered as part of the public mandate. And then from an advertising or client sourced advertising or client sourced revenue point of view, the local government can pay for airtime and hire presenters for appearances or hire out facilities owned by the station. If we look at the national government, they can provide equipment from a value in kind perspective. From grants and donations, they can support startup and or running costs. <clears throat> for the radio station or subsidized transmission, broadcast uh, technology fees, and provide tax breaks. From a programming and content point of view, they can buy airtime for public interest programming and advertising. And from an advertising or client source revenue point of view, the national government can pay for airtime and hire presenters for appearances or hire out facilities owned by the station. And then the last one, the donors. From a value in kind perspective, they can provide equipment. From grants and donations perspective, they can support startup and or running costs. And from a programming and content perspective, they can buy airtime and provide public interest programming, sponsor training and sponsor networking. So there's quite a lot that can be done to bring in alternative revenue streams. Valuing kind support is vital for both small community radio stations and larger commercial businesses. It can be defined as a process whereby value is exchanged without money itself changing hands. Radio stations have a variety of services and products um, that they need to purchase in cases where they are not in a position to either barter for them or secure them free of charge. In both the bartering and the free of charge scenario, there is no money actually exchanging hands, but there is an exchange um, of items or services that have a monetary worth or value. Bartering involves the station giving something of value to the provider of the product or service that it requires. Um, this is termed as a trade exchange, which is something we'll chat about later on. And an example of this will be a radio station offers value in, in the form of advertising airtime or digital exposure on their platforms in exchange for a service such as printing flyers or for an event it wants to advertise or providing free Wi-Fi for its on a studio. Um, so you will hear with the trade exchanges that the type of things that the radio station will barter for would normally be something that will cost the station nothing. So airtime and digitally putting up advertising posts. Um, so, but it's got quite a. So as much as it costs the station nothing, it still has a monetary value to it because that's our product. That is what we sell as a radio station. OK, um, and especially community radio stations tend to use this trade exchange services quite a lot uh, for different things, whether it is for t-shirts for the radio stations or whether it is for star functions or whatever it might be it's um this bartering process is one that takes place more often that takes place often in commercial in community radio stations valuing kind support that is free of charge um, is in the form of a donation Valuing kind support that is free of charge is in the form of a donation of the services or product by a community business or an individual. For example, a small local business may offer some shopping vouchers or free consultation time as part of an on-air competition that listeners would be able to win. This means, <clears throat> this means that the radio station does not have to spend money in order to purchase prizes for on-air campaigns and competition. Rather, the donor of the prizes is securing value through brand exposure of the products uh, or items that they are donating, or simply happy to provide products as they themselves provide products that they themselves don't need as a donation of goodwill. 
As the overall custodian of the success of the station, it is the station manager who must monitor the financial health of the business. Um, as we've previously mentioned, the station manager oversees both sides of the financial equation. equation. So the generation of revenue through the sales manager and the sales team, and the expenditure of the station through various member, uh, members of the team who manage the payment and negotiation of staff salaries. So, for example, um, the human resources team who, for example, human resource manager and the program manager. So other expenditure, expenditures um, of the station could be through maintenance, the purchasing of equipment. So, for example, from a technical producer's point of view um, and costs involved in sales team commissions, stipends, expense claims for transports and food, travel, broadcast technology costs, etc. The budgeting process is done annually and starts with a projection um, of how much income the station expects to make and how much it expects to spend. Okay, so like any other business. This is just one part of the all important balancing act. It is important to remember that what you spend has to be less than what you make. And if you're expected to make a profit, there needs to be a projection on how much you will need to make um, and how much you're able to spend in order to secure that profit. While many of these expenses are easy to project, others are not so easy, okay? Um, it's easy to project how much we'll spend on salaries if all the positions are filled and the staff contracts are signed. It is also easy to predict how much overhead expenses such as water and electricity will cost and what the cost of subscriptions to certain research services and types of commissions will be. A good budgeting process will ensure that there are some spend put aside for unforeseen circumstances such as a sales team that unexpectedly supersedes its targets for several months and is therefore entitled to a higher commission. Or a critical member of the on-air um, on or management team departs and you need to replace them. However, the best replacement is more costly as a resource. Or an important piece of costly equipment fails unexpectedly and needs to be replaced. Like something that happened over this weekend with Cape Talk in Cape Town, which is part of Prime Media. Their transmitter site was burgled um, this past weekend, which left them off air for, for about 12 hours. And that's quite an expensive operation. So that's one of those places where you quickly need to need some reserve money to be able to replace the stolen parts to be sure to make sure that you can get yourself back on air. Many stations pay their on air and production teams in a different way to their permanent staff. Many content providers like presenters, DJs, content producers, digital and social media teams um, and news crews are paid as freelancers with hourly rates. So what is a freelancer? A freelancer is defined as someone who works for themselves rather than a specific employer. This means that they can take on work from different employers at the same time and will change an, and will charge an hourly rate for the number of hours um, it takes them to complete the work. What will happen here is what will happen here is that these types of individuals will have different types of contracts with various employers that they deliver work for and will pay different types of tax um, based on the relevant, country, relevant country's tax legislation. In the case of a radio station, having a large complement of, of freelance staff means that the station management team must, bu must budget for a certain number of hours over a certain number of weeks, um, keeping in mind that some months might have five weeks instead of four. Um, over a certain number of months to land a, region, a reasonable budget figure for the entire year, okay? This becomes more complex when you consider standards. A standard refers to another member of the on -air team who stands in for a particular uh, freelance DJ or presenter when they take leave or ill. This requires the station to have a particular policy on how to pay a standard. Some stations say that there's a flat hourly rate for any freelancer who stands in for someone. Other stations will say that whoever stands in is paid 
their own stipulated hourly rate um, as agreed and included in their freelance contract, no matter no matter the time of day or the type of stand in work that the person is doing for the station. However, doing this might mean that the standing costs more per hour than the person who usually does, does that job. If this happens too often, or if the station manager does not allow for enough flexibility in the budget, the cost of freelance staff will rapidly overshoot the budget projection. In order to evaluate the financial health of a business, the station manager may ask the following questions. Does the station have clear policies and guidelines for how to spend its budget, um, as, well as, as well as how it will track expenditure and income? Does the station generate, does the station generate sufficient income over the average of 12 months to support all of its expenditure, including paying all talent and staff? Does the station have diverse sources of income? Are there regular financial audits and are financial documents regularly prepared for an external auditor or the board of directors to review? Are there clear marketing, sales and promotions policies in place to guide station expenditure, as well as levels of approval needed for the type of expenditure in these areas? Are the broadcasting technologies that the station is paying for delivering all that they are able to do? Hmm. Are the broadcasting technologies that the station is paying for delivering all that they are able to? Three, they explain what a stand-in is and describe two ways in which a stand-in can affect the station's budget. Okay, we literally just spoke about it, so it's not a difficult question. And that, in essence, brings us to the end of the station manager's uh, chapter. So, in summary, in this chapter, you were introduced to the station management both as a concept and in terms of the rules of roles of the station manager. Um, it offered guidance on management and leadership as principles of good station management. We discussed the innovation as the key aspect of managing strong teams. Um, then we spoke about the three pillars of the station management, namely programming and content, sales and revenue, and marketing. From a structural and disciplined perspective, organograms representing the different roles and responsibilities of individuals under the three pillars of the station were also outlined. And then lastly, we looked currently, lastly, we just looked at the budgeting and finance as a core discipline of station management. And we looked at an overview of revenue and expenditure that radio stations must manage. So that means we just finished with this module and that we'll be starting with a new module in the ne next lecture. So by now you should have a very good understanding about a radio station about uh, the roles and the duties and everything that goes with the radio station. So with that, remember to do your homework and to email it through to me. Um, and then until next time, bye.